Hi and welcome back. In this section, we're going to cover segments and drilling down into these segments. So we're going to jump onto my computer here and I'm going to show you how to get this done. All right, welcome back. This is Justin Rondo and in this section, we're going to be talking about segmentation and drilling down. So I know in uh, section two, I talked a, a fair bit about um, segments in Google Analytics and, and how those work for you. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, because a lot of how we approach data in this certification is really by looking at aggregate averages and when we see something you know that's outside of our baseline we then begin to drill down to try and put context to that so that is a particular type of segmentation um, but I want to look at um, how you can one create advanced segments in Google as well as kind of getting you in the mindset of of how you start creating segments and, and how to use them correctly. So, I mean, a segment, what it really is, is it's kind of, it's very personalized to your own organization. Like what uh, particular segments at, you know, an e-commerce store aren't going to be the same as something that we use here at DM. Uh, similarly for, um, for lead generation companies, they're going to have a much widely different need for uh, different segments in order to answer their business questions. You use segmentation to get a better understanding of your audience to answer your specific business questions. Okay, so let's actually get into the Googles and start taking a look again. So let's sign in. And I think this is probably one of the best ways to start thinking about segments is using Google's uh, segment creation tool because it, it makes you start thinking about you know the different types of of people that are that are accessing your site and how those and and and, and how those inter impact your business decisions. So I talked earlier about the concept of averages lying, and that, that there is something to that. I mean, averages are taking everything in, all of your outlying data, really everything. They're taking a look at, at all possible outcomes and then reporting on that. And you know, there's going to be a wild range in between people. Uh, and how they interact on the site. We saw that with um, the bounce rate outliers and things like that. So I think you really do need to understand that when you're looking at you know this chart right here, you're seeing this as you know the average of every person that's interacting with your site. And that's not going to give you completely useful data, uh, especially when it might be you know a smaller segment of people that are that are causing you know a big lift or, or, or a big drop. So let's first dig into how to create advanced segments in Google Analytics, and then let's discuss a little bit more about the, the, the process of segmentation and why it's useful. Okay, so let's actually create a new one here. And I know I showed you quickly like how you can do it off of you know demographic data, technology, behavior, um, first session, traffic source information, as well as e-commerce information as well. Then you can get into advanced work here and things with conditions, uh, in sequences. So say you have, have a funnel sequence that you want people to go through, you can actually set up a segment of people who have gone through that sequence completely. Okay, so for like sequences here, let's let's say we want to see somebody that, you know, took, that visited the ultimate social media sell, uh, selling machine. So we want to get that information. That took our lead magnet. So we want to go to page here where we have a lot of stuff in there. So page contains, then we have our next step is followed by them seeing this page. Again, page contain. So what we have right here is we see that they've seen the lead magnet offer, they've taken the lead magnet offer, and now we want to see if they've actually, you know, taken the, the offer of the, the execution plan. So let's add another step here. So it's followed by, we can do again, this is the page level is probably the easiest to do this at and the sequence and we can say contains secure social selling OTO. That's based off of our, our URL structure. And we can see over the last um, month that on this funnel, 67 people went through that. So I could say right here, um, social selling purchases, and then let's give it context. Uh, social media swipe file lead magnet. 
So that's a really, really small segment at 67. Okay. But there's other things you can do there. That's a simple, simple like example of a sequence. You can get far more advanced with your sequences. And actually, you can see in this report, um, we were sporadically doing things with traffic on this one before, and we actually started turning on our traffic again with it. So let's actually go back into segments, new segment. I'll go back to sequences, and you can see here, you can make each step fairly complex. You can have an and, and or or statement in there, um, or being, you know, if it's either this or this. So that could, like, if it was one page or another page, either one will count as the sequence, and being they both have to happen in order for it to be considered a step, okay? And then you can also, you know, have exact matches, starts with, ends with, etc. So sequences are pretty powerful. Conditions are, are also very powerful. So say you're not looking for an actual sequence of events. You just want to know, you know, if there were particular conditions met that don't fit these kind of prefabricated ones that are up here. So this you can get a little bit more advanced in as well. Um, you can also just start taking a look at, you know, uh, e-commerce e data. So your transaction ID, um, if you have that data being pushed through your, from the data layer, um, the actual amount of revenue, days of transaction, products, product category, and et cetera. So let's actually look at some of the segments I've created already and actually so you can get a better understanding of what, I'm, what I've done before here. So, so here's an example of a, of a segment I created where I want to actually remarket to users that have consumed our create your content engine execution plan but haven't taken or haven't purchased our content certificate course. So this was one way that we could find people that had an interest in the content, but hadn't yet bought kind of our more premium content yet. So, I mean, this was just a, a very simple condition that, that we created uh, in the advanced section here. We could probably actually hone it in a lot more now that we have more e-commerce data coming through, um, kind of digging into the actual product, uh, the product title rather than kind of having to deal with uh, the different pages from the purchase page so that have actually probably make this a bit more um, a bit more succinct. But you can see here that when you start creating segments, you just don't want to, you know, go in there and create them for no reason. You want to start creating these things to get a better understanding on your audience. What I wanted to find out were who were people that were hitting our site um, and consuming a particular piece of content but hadn't yet purchased some of some other content we think is actually useful for them. And one thing you can do uh, within Google Analytics is actually then push this data into your AdWords account and create remarketing, uh, remarketing ads for those. So another thing that we can look at is, um, this one's an interesting one. So here's another lab members missing seven days. So we wanted to actually see, we wanted to create a segment of people that hadn't been hadn't visited the site that have gone to, have logged into lab before. So we're looking at people who've logged into lab in the past month, but hadn't been to the site in seven days. So why? We wanted to try to find a way to start re-engaging for those people. So we again could start doing a remarketing campaign based off of this segment saying like, you know, did life get in the way? Like we miss you, blah, blah, blah. That might be a bit too much for seven days, but it can start telling us, you know, how many of our people are, are, you know, not spending, you know, one fourth of, of the month there. So we can actually change that and say after 14 days and see what happens. And it's even less. So that's nice. So we can see, you know, people that visit lab, they do come back and they come back often enough. Let's see, days since last session one, it should be a fairly big number. It'll break down here a little bit more, but you'll see, you'll see it kind of uh, the number gets less and less as we get further away, but this is a useful stat for us so we can find out, you know, who of our lab members aren't logging in anymore and how can we reach out to them? And then on top of that, how are they behaving, um, which is useful for us as well. So segments, what they're going to be doing for you here is giving you more information about your, your user base and the people that are interacting with your site and they'll be answering very specific questions. So let's look at it. Let's look at a, a kind of a baseline one where we have non-converters. So goal completions per user equals zero, and then transactions per user equals zero. So we're looking at you know ninety four point two four percent of our people hitting the site are not you know creating any sort of transaction. And what we should what we should compare that to is people that actually do have a transaction. So let's rather than build this out, 
let's take a look at these. So let's remove. So let's take, go into system here, and I want converters and non-converters. Okay. So when you, when you have the segment that you're looking for and the people you want to learn more about, then you can start asking more detailed questions about them. Okay, let's actually get rid of all sessions. So the graph isn't totally skewed. Okay, and we can start seeing things here. With, with converters being the blue line, they spend a little under six minutes on the site viewing almost three pages per session, okay? Versus the non-converter that spends only two minutes. So let's actually start saying, you know, what what's the content people that our converters are seeing? So we go into behavior, behavior, site content. Let's go into all pages. Okay, so most of our converters, let's see here, so let's, now dig into like the different areas of the site that we have. Okay, so we have digitalmarketer.com. Most non-converters are seeing that page. So this is just pages overall, but let's start seeing like what are some of the landing pages that people are hitting, okay, versus converters and non-converters. So, all right, so in terms of landing pages, people who are landing on digitalmarketer.com are generally considered non-converters on the page. They like that's thirty-one thousand of the people that hit the site that hit the um on that page. They're not converting there, and it makes a lot of sense. We don't have a, a very solid call to action on the page there that would get people uh, moving through. Whereas people that do hit that page are likely that that have converted are likely have some sort of affinity to the brand already. Um, I think one thing that would be interesting to see is from a converter to non-converter perspective the how, how they interact with the page and the, the overviews themselves. So now that we, again, know who we're looking at and, and who what our data set is, we can start seeing how they, how they interact. So non-converters have significantly more internal clicks. They're exploring more. Um, non-converters don't watch as much video. Um, this would be mainly in the converter section. For external clinks, non-converters are clicking external links more and getting off the site. So that shows us the type of interactions they're having with the page. But let's also take a look at things like, you know, where are they leaving? So where are non-converters jumping off? Like what, what is an area that could be hurting us here? And then a lot of them right here, we have non-converters leaving on, um, on our social list building page, which is one of our sales pages after they sign up for a lead magnet. Okay. So we can start contextualizing our data a lot more and really digging into where some of the holes are for us for this particular uh, segment. So segments will tell you more about the people that are interacting with your site and tell you about that demographic. Are they converters, non-converters, returning visitors, non-returning visitors, people that have seen a particular type of content but haven't purchased that type of information. And then it will apply it directly to um, the other information in terms of you know acquisition, uh, behavior, conversion, etc. So that is really kind of like how segmentation works and how it works within Google Analytics. But overall, like how you have to start thinking about segments, it's who are the people that you want to get more information about and then really start digging down into how they are using your site, where they're doing it well, and where they are dropping off. So as soon as you have that information, then you become a lot more powerful and you will be able to really, really begin to get the full picture from your data. All right.